Welcome to Conversations in the Void. I'm your host, Joshua Vaughn Ammon, and joining me today is Samantha McCurdy. It's an absolute pleasure having you on the show, darling. Thank you so much. Thanks the for pleasure joining us. is all mine. So let's uh, just kick this off and just have a little like real talk. Let's get in there. Um, things that have been happening recently. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, you're a busy girl these days. Super busy. Um, I have a solo show coming up at the end of September, potentially first weekend in October. And I'm already cracking the whip with that in my studio. I'm just trying to make as much work as I can for that so that I have the opportunity to edit and really put my best work in the show. Um, also, I hate feeling rushed and I hate, you know, making decision making decisions creatively with a time frame that kind of sucks. So I like to give myself a little bit of breathing room to think about the space, the atmosphere, and then the work that's within it too. Mm-hmm. And the body of work that um, you've been making in the past few months, uh, things the that snug were... The Snug Series? What, yeah. Is that what you're calling it? Yeah, the Snug Series. All right. Talk to me. So I first showed this work at... Um, re-galleries booth at the Dallas Art Fair in April. Um, The snugs are basically called snugs because they're two separate canvases with protruding um, elements that sort of crisscross or snug each other in different ways. So the plane reaches over to the next painting and vice versa, like they flirt with each other. So I really like the the way that that sort of um, ended ended up coming together. So um, pretty much for that first body of work, I was using the same shape over and over. And now I think with this next body of work, I'm using that as a jumping off point and entering new shapes that I haven't used before. Um, Different things that protrude or come outward from the context of a painting that suggests sculpture. And with that particular body that you're starting off of and then moving forward with for the solo show, um, that's a new language that you've been activating, right? Uh, You know... The work so much is about the the structure of the piece. Working within the confines of a stretcher bar, therefore, it becomes this paint painting. You know, it's a rectangular object, but uh, the artist is not there, so to speak. I mean, you know, you haven't painted an object, so to speak. It's become an object in and of itself because of its own physicality. Because you're you're pulling the spandex over these protruding three dimensional objects. You know, you're making this form but within the restrictions of a painting and therefore it's a painting. Well, I think painting always like owes, especially representational painting, um, always owes some extent to sculpture, right? Painting a portrait, you have to paint the object in a round. Painting anything, you know, realistically, representationally, like a still life or whatever it may be, you're painting it in the round, you're painting it like an object. And because you're using that illusion to make it look like an object, you're aware of it in real life. So with these paintings that I'm making, they are um, still in the context uh, uh, and still, you know, utilizing the same method of display as paintings. But instead of painting an object, in the round and trying to make an illusion I'm actually just sticking things through the back of it to make the painting actually have presenting an object. the object yeah, yeah presenting the object in the round so it's not an illusion it just is in actual mm-hmm all right excellent and uh, this, this solo show I don't even think we mentioned that's also gonna be at re gallery right? yeah correct awesome um, so as far as you know, I, we're talking about, I guess, what you're working with and, you know, how to talk about that. I, I feel that, like, a lot of artists um, get really hung up or at least work in the shadow of this art history. Um, you know, what conversations are you supposed to be entertaining here? You know, is it Like feeling pressured to recognize your predecessors, people that came before you. Um, in art making in a way to sort of like contextualize it or talk about it in an in institutional setting. Mm-hmm. And it really, it, well, I mean, it seems to really manipulate the dialogue, you know, especially, well, I mean, in my impression, I, I always, I've always stood by that something can be understood objectively, you know. Honestly, like interpreting my art is a magical thing for me. I rarely sit down in my sketchbook and try to think of all of these concepts and all of these things that I want to work with. Usually it's just the act of making. I sit in my studio and I'm like, okay, what do I think looks dope? What kind of shapes are speaking to me? Like I did this thing once before, let's explore that, let's open that up. Uh, Just using my own kind of language to just like make myself happy, I guess, and fulfill this like innate act 
to create. Because, I mean, a lot of people's artist statements are contrived. It's like a whole bunch of like hoopla and BS that doesn't really, like, were you really thinking about that when you made that piece? Or did you read a bunch of intellectual shit that came before you to talk to about your, your piece <laughs> to people or to back it up so you yeah. feel less self-conscious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, is this act of justifying really just, like, self-conscious where you have, like, anxiety of making something weird and you have to, like, put a label on it that's, in order for it to be, like, received? Like, you know, how does that work? That's always something that's concerned to me because I, I, I felt, like, many times when I was interacting with artwork that if I hadn't had that verbose palaver explanation, whatever you want to call it, you know, conjoined with the artwork, I might've had a better opportunity to engage with it. But at a certain point, sometimes I feel as though because today with this exploding art field and, you know, artists coming out more and more exponentially every year, there's sort of this like demand for the academic. There's a demand for like, oh, there's something really Show concrete me your happening here. Where are yeah. your badges? It like, strikes yeah. me as though this this academic writing, or you know, it's really putting the artwork in, into an entirely new medium of words, and and that so often becomes really the artwork in and of itself. It's a stand-in for what you're lacking in the piece itself. You know. Uh, if you missed this performance somehow when it was happening and you were there, it's okay because it's written down for you. So, you know, pull out your thesaurus and you can blow this right through it, you know. Right. I mean, you could have <laughs> really heady, well-read people talk to you about your art or you could have a child talk to you about your art, right? Mm -hmm. Like, in a lot of ways, the child is going to have, like, this direct relationship uh, or associations and they could talk about it that way. And then the really heady person can maybe have the understanding of relating certain objects to emotions or feelings, but more often than not, will relate it to some piece of literature that they've read. Certainly. Right? So it's kind of like there's pluses and minuses to both, but I don't think that, like, one is necessarily better than the other. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it strikes me as you're a person that seems to function really strongly in the... I don't want to say art brute, but I, you're a very instinctual painter. You you have an emotional intelligence about yourself. I mean, something... You feel your way through things. It feels right, and this and so on. And you move through things because of a person that... What I admire is a, a real obsession with material. Uh, your work is 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 very much about um, this form formalist sort of appreciation for what you're working with and letting it kind of do the speaking. Like the medium is the message. It's not it's not um, something that you're imbuing with all these things, so to speak. You know, you're just allowing like uh, the the structure the the materiality to kind of speak all on its own and you're finding these nuances and subtleties that can be like really appreciated and identified there. That's what I really like about your work. Thank you. Um, yeah, material is everything. I, I mean, I, I make things that I want to touch, that I like touching. And, and you're I, screwing with different material all the time. Especially the spandex that I'm currently working with. Like that with like things stretched through it is such like a, such a, mo uh, a, a motion or an object or like a gesture or tension. Mm -hmm. Like I love that like tight stretched things over it, but I'm still comforted. So by have you been fact. messing with all the different spandexes out there? Yeah, I've been I mean, using a lot of different kinds. stretchy. I actually started out using stretchy denim. Um, it started from canvas poking things and I didn't get as much stretch as I wanted. So I'm like, what do I wear that's really stretchy? My jeans, let me use some denim. And then furthermore, I went to spandex to get that like ultimate sort of uh, outward poking gesture. I dig it. And you know, you're a person uh, that I feel might become a a lost breed sometime soon, but uh, you're very well steeped in like portraiture painting, which you still, you still do. It's, I love that um, for sure. And I think that's maybe why I'm connecting like sculpture with painting because there's something really nice about um, comprehending a painting, like internalizing a painting. It's a really easy subject to um, it, like internalize. When I see a frame like this hung on the wall, I know it's a painting. And because that's something that everybody has like internalized when they look at that, I can then enter a sculptural object into that and have it like coming out and, and make it more than a painting while still being in the framework of that so that I can explore these wild things but still like laying back and still being comfortable like within it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I've done other sculpture before that is not in that format, but I think for right now, I, I'm really enjoying that comfort that I find in that context.
Sweet. Well, I look forward to your show. It's going to be you. it's going to be fantastic. Nose to the grindstone, darling. I'm... And by the way, shit. sweet kimono. Thank you so much. It's, it's really. I like to be cozy when we have real talk. It's quite beautiful. Yes. Thank you very well, much. Well, uh, you know, that's it for us time-wise. Um, hope to have you again on the show sometime Same. soon. Thank it's you. It's been an absolute pleasure. And uh, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you all next week.